Brasil é muito maior e muito mais forte. Brazil needs political leadership now more than ever, but a series of corruption scandals have brought the system to a gridlock. At the heart of the issue is the country's weak political system. Brazilians often vote for people and not party platforms. The lack of party allegiance makes it really tough to hold a political coalition together. Senators jump from one party to the other, so the surest way to get their vote is still a suitcase full of cash. Pork and barrel projects. Uh, uh, trade of votes in Congress for positions in the state apparatus. This has been throughout history something uh, uh, frequent in Brazil. Uh, Multi-party system that is dysfunctional, none of the parties are programmatic, uh, and they've, they're all riddled with corruption. Uh, too many years uh, at the public trough, and they don't know how to back off. The schemes are simple enough. President Lula had a very successful presidency. Later, it came to light that his coalition was held together by monthly bribes. They called that scandal Mensalau. And where does that money come from? Kickbacks on government contracts funneled through Petrobras, the state oil company. They call that one Petrolau. Well, this way of doing business in Brazil, you know, it's been going on for too long, you know? Uh, the only way to get things done is by uh, is by uh, doing, the, doing this bribery of public officials, you know? No, everybody's corrupt. Yeah. Corruption here in Brazil is something, um, it's in the structure. It's always been like this, and I don't know if it's going to change, but certainly not with what we have today, you know, in both sides. The culture, the institution cultural brasileira, the jeitinho brasileiro, is muito present. All right, so let's just take a little time out to talk about jeitinho brasileiro. Here in Brazil, that's a word for sort of a little way of getting things done. The idea is that with thick legal codes and political fragmentation, it's very difficult to do anything by the book. So people find jeitinhos, or little ways around the rules. Now the problem is, those jeitinhos are not always legal. The Brazilians are just about fed up with this. And I think people are asking themselves, and rightfully so, are my representatives actually representing me, or are they just sort of using my vote as a way of gaining enough power to then represent someone else? Um governo corrupto, muita corrupção nesse país é o que acaba com o país é a corrupção. São os maus políticos que a gente tem. Aí começou a corrupção do lado início, do lado menor até o maior grau. E é isso que é endêmico. Now it's one thing for richer, whiter Brazilians to protest a left-leaning government. But you know the situation has changed when even Brazilians who benefited from PT governance demand change. I visited Bahia in the Northeast, a poorer state with deep African roots that voted 60% for Dilma in the 2014 election. The government of Bahia is excellent. But the president, the prefect, PT, lá através de muitas das coisas que estão acontecendo, inclusive que não. É, também pelo negócio do Mensalão, Petrobras e muitas das coisas. Passa Lula. Lula. Ladrão, 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 mafioso. Não, não, não. Ratazana. Ratazana. Ratazana, ladrão, mafioso. Não ajudou a gente. Não. Ultimamente ele. Is, is derived from disillusionment of uh, what was sold to the population and what was in fact being delivered. The frustration stems from a feeling that this is politics as usual. But this may be finally changing. And they're sending people to jail. The old concept of impunity, which was so strong among the elite and the powerful in Brazil, has now been challenged. And people I would never have thought would go to jail are sitting in jail in Brazil. I was with musician and community leader Edu Grau when news broke that Marcelo Udebrecht, a titan of Brazilian business, was sentenced to 19 years for corrupt practice. How is your reaction to this news? 
é legal. É legal. Não é legal, né? Na realidade. Mas assim, a gente não pode celebrar a prisão de, de, de nenhuma pessoa. Só que eu acho que é o seguinte, cara, que ele vai. Ele, no papel ele vai pegar 19 anos. Eu nunca vi ninguém realmente dar colarinho branco ficar preso. Essa galera não fica preso. A gente sabe quem fica preso é o favelado. We, we, we're not in Kansas anymore. The country has already changed. Uh, and not only at the federal level. This is filtering down to, uh, to, uh, to the provincial level and to, and to, the, local, to the local level. Increased scrutiny on corruption may be a good thing, but the path ahead is treacherous. President Dilma Rousseff stands accused of fudging fiscal numbers, and the opposition seeks her impeachment. What does Brazil need? I need to PT out. PT out. Yeah, PT out. Go to the jail. Out, out, out. Look, an impeachment uh, process is, is a legitimate, uh, constitutionally uh, uh, existing a way to deal with problems. So long as that happens according to, you know, the Constitution and following proper due process, I think this could uh, do us uh, uh, some good. But while financial markets love the idea of impeachment, some question what impeaching a pro-poor president would mean for Brazilian democracy. Mas no momento em que o Lula ele entra na política, sabe, ele de alguma forma ele fortalece a camada popular, as favelas, as periferias, a, a, a classe excluída dentro do campo do que era a política dominante, sabe. Luiz Ducci is a founding member of the PT and he served as minister in Lula's government. Se nós considerarmos a necessidade de políticas públicas espe específicas para atender aos trabalhadores e aos pobres, nenhum partido político que governou o Brasil eh, antes do PT teve a ênfase, a prioridade que nós tivemos. Se o Brasil impeaches o presidente Dilma e throws o ex-presidente Lula em jail, it risks alienating the poor people that the PT brought into the political system. Eu acho que sim, é um ataque meramente político. Não existe nenhuma base jurídica para a tentativa de impeachment da presidenta Dilma. In the meantime, Brazil remains in gridlock, and like Rio traffic, it could be stuck for a while.